I'm Clint Emerson, retired Navy SEAL. Throughout my career, I've seen the very worst of mother nature and human nature. From avalanches and hurricanes to civil wars and kidnappings, the secret to survival is being prepared, and this is your starter guide. Every successful operation requires a well thought out ops plan for proper execution. Being ready for an emergency is no different. So today we're going to talk about a foundational requirement for anyone serious about being ready in an emergency. The easiest way to ensure you're ready for whatever comes at you is to know the situations that you're most likely going to face which is why you want to perform a proper threat assessment. From natural disasters like earthquakes, fires, and catastrophic storms, to human disasters like riots and even terrorism, emergencies can come in all shapes and sizes. Understanding what scenarios are most likely to affect you and your family is key for true readiness. Identify your particular vulnerabilities and drill down your focus onto those disasters you're most likely to face. Don't be a dumbass and plan for a tsunami if you live in Kansas. I mean, come on, common sense applies here. Knowing the history of your area and the types of emergencies your community has faced in the past will give you an idea of what you can expect in the future. Remember, those who don't know their history are doomed to repeat it. You also need to pay close attention to the infrastructure around you. Do you live near a dam, chemical factory, or a power plant? What kind of disaster will occur should it all fail? How can you prepare for it? Consider the terrain and population where you live. Are you in a rural or urban area? Those of you living in a rural area, well, you may be waiting a little bit longer than everyone else for power to resume or whatever it is that you're missing out on. For people living in more urban environments, understanding the best estimate for basic services to resume is essential. When emergency services like police, fire, water, power are all conducting emergency training exercises, their standard minimum estimate is three to four days before those agencies can get on their feet and start functioning at a level beyond basic emergency response. Groups like the Red Cross do a great job responding to disasters, but even they take time to get operational. Once you have a clear idea of the threats you're going to face, deciding on supplies and the tools you need to prepare becomes a lot clearer. Remember, if you find yourself in need of some guidance on what to include in your family's emergency kit, you can get national recommendations from FEMA.gov or RedCross.org. Check out your local resources by visiting your state or county office of emergency management's website. Finally, after you decide on what you need to ensure you're prepared, it's time to focus on how you will be prepared. Talk to your family members, your close friends, and even your neighbors. Have a plan in place and know who is responsible to take action. Everyone in your squad can play a role, but they need to know what their role is and never forget the seven Ps. Proper planning prevents piss poor performance. 